Hey, Stephen. Hey. Been a while. I think the last time we spoke was probably around the time of Noodler or the MIDI. MRCC. MRCC, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we've talked about those in the past, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, um, but now you're getting into the whole, whole instrument game with Absolutely. terrain, right? Absolutely, yes, yeah. Um, initially, I came up with this idea while I was trying to puzzle out the math behind um, wavetable synthesizers, and I had this thought about this cool thing being a terrain synth. Of course, after a short amount of research, I realized that it was invented in the 1970s. Um, no one's ever um, implemented one as a product. Uh, actually, there's a soft product that just released just a month or so ago. Um, but uh, from a hardware point of view, it hasn't been implemented. And so we're, we've been working on this for about th uh, three, four years. And um, we are super excited to finally show it. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the kind of the basic concept, I mean, I guess it relates to Wavetable in a way. A little bit, yeah. yeah. So the terrain is effectively like a three-dimensional map or a topography of some kind Except that a playhead or something moves around which denotes the timbre of the synthesizer? Is that Absolutely roughly right. around Absolutely right. That's it? perfect, yeah, yeah. We call it the path. Uh, playhead is a, certainly a valid way to talk about it. Um, it what we're seeing right here is uh, a terrain that will, when you sweep it with this uh, circular path, will give us, you know, just a sawtooth. Um, and if you move, uh, change the type of terrain, we've got all these different types of terrains. Uh, okay, so, so you can get sine waves with yep. gentle undulating uh, valleys uh, uh, of equal sure, amounts. Sure, yeah, okay, absolutely, cool. yeah. So if you play this and then you move the path around. Ah, uh, so it's like, it's, it's like it, wave morphing slash. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It's, it, right. And, and, and there's all kinds of control. So if we change the size of it, so we get a frame. They get, it tends to get more complex the bigger. So the path. it's almost folding, is it? It's not, not quite folding. It's just it's just traversing the terrain. Um, we can also all change the. Now you see it folding because it's hitting the so top. So the, the path that we see is not a real time. It's just showing you the path because obviously that's going much faster. Absolutely. The ball the... is just for your visualization. Yeah. If you're playing an A, an A440, that ball would go around 440 yeah, times yeah, okay, a second. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So we can rotate and we can change the aspect ratio. We could change the shape of it. Again, changing the aspect ratio. We could change the type of terrain it's over. So if, uh, if we go back to a circle here, keep it simple. Uh, we go over to like a, a step. Oh wow, so you've got the shape of the path and the and, terrain. And, and the terrain, absolutely. Oh wow, okay, that's yeah, a bit yeah. mind-blowing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, because the shape of the terrain is a step and we're going over it with a circle, um, and we can actually move what does that sound like, Nick? Yeah, I'm hearing some PWM, <laughs> I think. Sounds familiar to me. <laughs> yeah. So how many of these are there per voice? Um, there, well, um, there are two terrains per voice. So like, uh, we can go over here and make the second terrain uh, the, this egg crate, and then I can morph between the terrains. Right, okay. It's already kind of mind-blowing in terms of just the oscillators. A absolutely, absolutely. And, and we could, so that's a good segue. We talk modulation. So one of the other things we chose on this synthesizer since we were trying to be innovative is we basically have modulators for every parameter. So, <laughs> so in this case, we're on the morph parameter, right? If I want to modulate it, I just come up here and I push the LFO button, and now I just add some LFO, and I could change the speed. And that's per voice or global or it, it's per it's per timbre. Right. Right. There's uh, another good segue. There's four timbres on this, so you choose the timbre with these. So right now we're just listening to one timbre. Okay. And I can go to B, C, and D. So it's like four layers it's, effectively. It totally. Exactly. And how many voices per timbre? Eight. So thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay. And also, um, it's not just that. If we go up to the voice uh, menu and we can add um, unison voices. So it gets that unison sound. But notice I'm playing three notes. We still have three note polyphony, even though I've got six note stack. Because right. so you're doing that in DSP, I guess. Yeah, so, so the unison does not affect the polyphony. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, we haven't got a filter or anything yet. No, we so. have not, right. In fact, I find myself never even touching the filter because there's so, so many ways to change the shape of the waveform that uh, if, you sh if you shrink the waveform, if you, if by shrinking the path, I should say shrinking the path, 
it's basically reducing the amount of complexity, which is, is it, a so bit the like harmonics filtering. reduce. Yeah, 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 totally. Yep, yep. Um, so these are mathematical terrains. Basically, it means that they're built into the synth, and the terrain itself is a math equation. And so there's no sampling. There's no having to lerp between points or anything like that. Or, um, but I guess if there's a finite amount of DSP, this is running on some kind of CPU yes. under that, right? Yeah, okay, yes, good. yes. Where I was going with that is the terrains can be uh, not just these math terrains, but as we scroll down here, these are image terrains. So these are PNG files and JPEG files. And we can bring these in as, as trains and as... So you could go really conceptual and go, I'm only going to make sounds out of my face, Absolutely. for instance. Or yeah, whatever, in or fact, whatever. my face is in there. Oh, does it? Oh, well, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's yours and not mine. Our, yeah. our original tagline when we first came up was we could play your grandma's face. It was just a stupid little thing we used right. to say. But, but yeah, sure, you can actually play your grandmother's face if you wanted to. Interesting. And are those, how do you put those in? They're just PNGs or do you have to make them black and white? No, nope, anything you want. In fact, uh, you just... Uh, you connect it to your computer, and it will show up as a mass storage device. You drag and drop your files over. Holiday photos, found bank. <laughs> could, be, <laughs> could be anything. Right. Yeah, uh, you'll notice that on this screen that there's some very graphic photos. It turned out that I originally thought, oh, yeah, photos of your face or whatever would be really cool. They're actually quite noisy because you're yeah, just looking at every pixel. and it's, But uh, I, I refer to it as a skateboard park. If you make graphics that look like a skateboard park, meaning ramps and and uh, hills and inclines. As you move your path around those terrains, you'll get the best of uh, those. Uh, right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in addition to that, we could scroll down a little further. Um, uh, one, of our, one of our Discord members gave me a bunch of terrain maps of famous uh, terrains of the world, all around the world, like <laughs> the Mount Mariana Everest. Trench. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, Mount nice. Everest, uh, Grand Canyon. Um, uh, the, uh, another another Discord user sent me a bunch of uh, photos of planets. So these are all the planets. Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, and then down here, these are actual imported um, wavetables. So these are serum wavetables. So we can import WAV files as well. As terrains. As terrains, right. So if oh, it, interesting. So, so up here, I've got this button called point of view, and I could switch through these different points of view. This is like top down. But the first point of view, I've kind of made it look a little bit more like a, a wavetable. Yeah, like three quarters. So and, then you... Yeah, and if we grab the, uh, go over to path and choose a line, now basically you've got a wavetable. Ah, wow, yeah. okay, that's interesting. So you're sort of applying almost FFT graphics a absolutely. Yeah. to yeah. synthesize an oscillator that's generation. Right. That's right, right. that's right, that's right. Hmm. Um, we also have, uh, well, you mentioned filter before, so we can... Let's see, we could pop up the resonance a little bit and... and just so like you got the DSP filter models in there, yeah, presumably. Yeah, yeah. A, bu a bunch of them. And actually, as we talked before, everything is modulatable. So if I wanted to modulate the cutoff, I come up here and hit envelope, add a little bit of envelope, add uh, attack. Okay. Can you modulate parameters modulators. with terrains? No, you cannot do that. Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. It's his fault. <laughs> that's our developer. <laughs> I had to get him in there. Um, uh, no, you can't. Um, I guess the cycles are much shorter. Aren't they? But yeah. Well, there's no good reason why we can't. It's just more of a. It was kind of a, a user interface. You visualize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was like, how do you explain that to an end user and? And not and keep it simple. Yeah. Um, okay. We, you know, that is something that's actually on the lo on long list of features. So presumably things. there are a bunch of preset patches which yes. kind of because there's uh, there are effects and stuff in here as well. A so absolutely. You, we can, yes. we can, so let's have a couple of fully baked sounds. If you okay. Don't mind. Let's that see if be... I could find a, a couple of those. So oh, I was going to show you the, the 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 FX. So for each for each layer we have four slots for effects. Wow. Okay. So I can put a little delay on there and. And then we can go to another and add some reverb. Uh, right, okay. So you so get that. Um, and do, do the ABCD mean it's also multi timbral? You can work it in multi. Right, so absolutely. Four part multi timbral, four part. Yep. So if you come down to the mixer area and we go down to this page, you can see that there's, there's four parts and we can choose which part we're dealing with. Yeah. And we can change the MIDI channel for that layer. And we can also change the you know, where where in that uh, in the keyboard 
range do you want to play? So that would be for splits. I mean, I'm just looking, there's a lot of GUI work you've done on this. Yes. I mean, there's a, yeah. it's like a kind of fully fledged computer application. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that. Well, one of the things that we absolutely tried to reject the premise of is this idea of a VST in a box. Right. So I, I, just because you have a big screen doesn't mean you're a VST in a box. So the screen that is not a touch screen because we wanted to maintain the input to be with the knobs and controllers like MIDI controllers. Um, and the screen is just for output. So even though it looks really complex, it lo sort of like a, like a, like a VST, it, it acts very much like a normal synthesizer with knob yeah, control. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, these four knobs down the side here are actually volume knobs for the four layers. For four layers, right. Okay. Um, uh, complete with, with, uh, with uh, solo and mute. Right. Because we're you know, as I was working with this, I was trying to create um, patches that had multiple layers in it. And the last, the worst thing is, is trying to turn down, if you want to just hear what that one layer is doing, if you don't have that. Solo it's quite handy. You got, yeah, right, so soloing is really handy. Yeah, as well as muting. So, yeah. So you can do splits and layers and mutes and solos as you're creating all these patches. So we were on our way to some fully baked patches. Yes. Have we, have we got something? We so you hit the load button and then A, and it shows us the load patch, and you can uh, choose your... Uh, so you can listen to the different patches here. Some of them are very evolving and they take a while. Let's see. I've actually gone for a fairly dry approach there, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, well these, uh, when you say fully baked patches, that's fully baked patches from me and the developer. Oh so, yeah, because yeah, so, I mean, we, we should say that this guys. is still, yeah. is, where are we? Is this sort of like production prototype or? Production prototype, yeah. We just funded our Kickstarter and uh, we'll be going, we're just starting our production. Run. So, right, yeah. we haven't got the patches in there. So yeah, we should, should say Correct. there's a caveat there, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, when yeah. I asked for fully baked patches, I was being very unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, yes, they're half-baked patches. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, uh, what's really cool about the patches system is that we have patches, a uh, system layer patches, which is multi-layer with all four terrains going, or all, all four layers going. Mm -hmm. You can also go load uh, in any one of the layers like we just did. Those are single layer patches, so you can essentially layer up to four, to have four different timbres. Yeah. But you can also, th you also do things like you can load, hit load LFO, and we have LFO patches. Right. So as you're developing and you come up with like a cool LFO, pa a cool LFO thing or a cool filter thing, you could store them. Is that because the LFOs are sort of pseudo function generators? It's totally. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, right, that right. Makes sense. So you have this flexibility of multiple layers of patches and you can build things very quickly that way with your, with the favorite things. And reuse have. it. That makes yep. sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we load that guy. Yep. Um, Let's see, uh, we'll, load, we'll load a system patch here. And this one, uh, one of my favorites is um, the Lyle. Lyle All right, so squares, right? Yeah. And this time we're actually playing all these different layers together. That's why you can see the, the notes indicators going. Ah, uh, OK. So where are we in terms of, I mean, I guess on the Kickstarter, you'll have said, you yep. know, deli first delivery in... About whatever. six months. About six yeah. months. Yes. Off. Okay. Yes. Yep. And that'll be for the first run. And then once yes. you've done that, have you got a bigger production run? Is that the plan? Or? Yeah, it's kind of stair-stepping the capital to build them, right? So we have enough to build about 250 units now. Okay. And, uh, and we only have to deliver 90. That's All uh, right, so then right. they'll be on general sale. Have you yep. got, have you got, I mean, obviously there's a Kickstarter price. Do you know what the final, what the sort of non-Kickstarter uh, price yeah, the, is going to be? Yeah, the list price will be eleven ninety nine. we believe. All right, okay. Uh, right now the Kickstarter, now that we're past the funding, you could still go to Kickstarter and participate, and it's nine ninety nine. Right, okay. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of less than I expected it to oh, be, to be honest. What, what in terms of uh, outputs? Have we got multiple outputs for layers, or is it single yeah. stereo? Or? Uh, uh, yeah, single stereo um, and headphones with a volume knob. Yeah. They're, they're balanced stereo as well, balanced or unbalanced. Um, we have six CV and gate inputs. Uh, right. Yep. We have two expression pedal inputs and one sustain pedal input. Um, uh, five pin DIN in and out MIDI. We've got uh, host USB MIDI and device 
USB MIDI. Right, so you could plug a keyboard in, like this Exa guy. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, you could have gone larger, but I realized the yeah. limitations of international travel. Yes, that's right. I went as small as I could. Um, let, me, let me show you a little bit about, um, so if I want to say, let's say here's the size, like uh, I told you, you could click LFO and modulate that way, right? If I click the expression matrix right here, we have four slots, and I can choose a source like mod wheel, and I can choose the, you know, I can attenuate the amount, and, right. um, and then I could also change the polarity of it. And so if I hit the mod wheel over here, uh, where is that? Uh, yeah, that's, there you go. So you can see that you can assign your mod wheel yeah. Yeah, 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 to any of yeah, yeah. And this is where, for e again, for each of the parameters, you can go so to this. Four, a four slot matrix. Four slot matrix per. Per, per layer. Per, no, per, 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 per parameter. Oh, I see. Per oh, parameter. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So lots. Lots, yeah, yeah. It's very, very expressive, yes. No, so what about kind of MPE and resolution for that sort of stuff? Yeah, we, we architected it to support MPE. We don't support it right now. We support polyphonic aftertouch. Um, and uh, we will we'll get to MPE as soon as we get through this first production run. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it's really exciting. Yeah. Thanks so much for showing us. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.